It's Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. Here's Jeff Parles. Welcome in. Sports by the Book is the show. South Point Studio on the site. Happy to be with you. A lot of a lot of friends back there already. About 40 minutes from tip-off for the game we've been waiting for all week long. Grambling in Montana State to kick off day two of the first four. Now, I'm not just that. You got Colorado and Boise State. Uh, I, I think it's safe to say that all four teams tonight will score more points than Virginia did last night. I feel pretty confident in that. Uh, look, I said it on the day the committee came out with the bracket. It was ridiculous. Virginia was in the field. And boy, did they deliver on it being ridiculous that they were in the field. Woo! El Stinko last night for UVA. So, uh, yeah. Before we get to our guy, Danny Burke, we have a, a huge show today. It's so huge that I didn't even say the H at the beginning of, uh, of the word huge there in the first one. Rob Mish will be with us in about 25 minutes from now. Dwayne Colucci will be with us at 340. Danny Burke will be with us as soon as we have a shot set up, uh, which is on more, more, uh, more a Danny Burke uh, thing more than anything. We'll have Danny in a second. But before we get to Danny, I got to bring up everything that I got in front of me because I have about 9,000 things in front of me today. Uh, first, as always, this sheet is everyone's favorite bet of the NCAA tournament, the first to 15s. Last night, Wagner as a dog got there. Colorado State as a favorite got there. Grambling, underdog tonight. Boise, underdog tonight. And that about plus 115, the best price you're getting right now between the two games. Grambling, the better price on that. We have cards out as well here at the South Point. The teaser card is out. 15 for 15, you want 350 to 1. So teasers for all the games except for the games involving first four teams are on this card. Uh, as you can see right here, the yellow card. This is yellow. That is the teaser card. Now we also have the pink card, which is very important for tomorrow. The $10,000 jackpot card. Of course, remember, Chris and company do this week one of the NFL season. They do this during bowl season uh, as well. There you go. The jackpot card, $5. Winner take all. Get as many as you write. Get as many of the games right outright tomorrow. This is just pick them. All these lines are pick them on the pink card for Thursday. If you go 16 out of 16, you're going to have a pretty darn good shot of winning $10,000. If you go 15 out of 16, you're going to probably have a chance to slice that $10,000. And guess what? If you don't win on Thursday, you can take your $5. And he can do it again with the orange card for Friday. Yeah, this is orange, right? We're going with orange for this. I like creamsicle, honestly, more than anything. Yeah, orangey red, whatever. Not the pink one. The orange, somewhat orange card. The $5, $5 gets you in. All the games are pick them, all 16 games for Friday. If you go 16 for 16, you're going to be getting at least a split of that $10,000. Uh, winner take all for this one. Really exciting. Uh, for this again, all the rules are on this side of the card. So, if you have any questions, it's your rule book right here. I also have, I didn't even want to be reminded of how poorly I did on Monday. The Witch South Point Studio host, wow, everyone got upgraded to host here, by the way. Uh, South, Point, South Point Studio host has the 2024 NCAA tournament winner on the men's side. Yours truly is the long shot at 22 to 1 because he has Kentucky and no one else any good. So, uh, right now, the favorite, I can't believe we let this happen, but Frank Nicotero's squad is the favorite. 2 to 1 on this one UConn, Tennessee, Iowa State, Clemson, Dayton, Nebraska, Duquesne, and Wagner. If any of those teams win, you would win this prop. 2 to 1 on Frank. Look, if you want to take the long shot, look, the long shot's always fun. You can get the same number right now on my collection of teams and the Kentucky Wildcats on their own. So why not take seven extra teams that can win the national championship? Now, Kansas got horrible news that Kevin McCullough is not going to be in the NCAA tournament at all. Uh, TCU is a nine seed. I love the 12-13s for whatever reason. UAB, James Madison, uh, Yale, Charleston, Long Beach are my team. Boy, I have a whole collection of garbage other than Kentucky. Let's be real with ourselves. 
on that. All right. And, of course, if all your uh, first-round matchups are already ready, the game's tonight behind us. There's a sheet for the first round on Thursday. There's a sheet for Friday somewhere on this desk. But I've made a mess of myself, so I have no idea where it is. Futures for the national champion and the regionals out there as well. Which conference will win a national championship? Which seed will win a national championship? Everything available here at the South Point. All right, it's time to get the cans on my, my head here. So let's bring them in. Burke's Beats, the podcast. Burke's Beat is the website. Danny and I went for, well, what did we go for on Monday, Danny? We went about 90 minutes on Monday uh, going through all the matchups. Uh, it's always fun to chat with you on air, so check out that episode and every episode Danny does. Danny, what's up, my man? How we doing today? Excited, buddy. I know uh, you're pumped over there in Las Vegas in the pinnacle of all the action. Fun podcast, like you mentioned. Yeah, I was going to say about 90 minutes, I think, is what it was, but always fun talking shop with you and really getting to dive into every single game. And like I kept stressing on that episode and in general, I mean, you know more about college basketball than most people. So always fascinating to explore your thought process for these matchups. And one thing I did want to say, I believe the color you were uh, looking for was a salmon color for that sheet when you were trying to blend the pink and orange together. That's what I would have went with for that sheet color. You know, I will say you have a better grasp. Again, you're in person, you, though, you, from you, my you, perspective. You have, a, you, you, you have a better grasp of the color palette than I do, Danny. I'll, I'll give you <laughs> that. I, yeah, I think Danny's right. I think this probably would go under. You know what? I'm going to have to ask Vinny and Chris after the show uh, what, what color. Or even Dwayne. We'll have Colucci on. He has all these cards up there at his property at the Rampart as well. We'll ask him uh, what he what, what color he calls it as well. All right, two games tonight in the tournament, Danny. I'll be quick on these. Uh, Montana State's four and a half behind us. There's some five out there as well. Uh, not as much five as there was a few hours ago, actually, on this game. So it's really four and a half predominantly in the market. Bet up, not a shock on the Bobcats against Grambling making their first NCAA tournament appearance. And then hopefully we get a better 10 seed playing game than last night's nonsense. Thank you for putting Virginia in committee. <laughs> uh, Colorado's up to three and a half. They opened one and a half, so pretty explosive move. Two whole points here for on the buffs. Either of these games fits your fancy tonight. Look, I, I'm getting involved because I have, I, I'd say strong leans, but I haven't given them out as official plays per se on the website or anything. I'm leaning with both the favorites tonight. I did stab a little bit of minus three in the hook with Montana State earlier in the week, was listening to some people who liked that side, and I thought they made some good points. And kind of just looking at some of these stats too, I mean, we know Grambling's unfamiliarity in this general area of being in the tournament, if you still want to call it the tournament, being the, four, uh, the first four playing games. And it, Look, they turn over the ball a lot. They don't have an efficient enough offense, I don't believe, to keep up with Montana State, who can score the ball at will. And you're seeing that being reflected in the market. So, again, I laid minus three in the hook, Jeff. At four in the hook, eh, I mean, yes, I'd still gravitate toward Montana State, but ideally you could lay a four spot. And then with Colorado and Boise State, I know Boise's coming into this spot all ticked off because they thought she, they should have got seated already. And uh, maybe you're seeing that as people thinking that's a little bit of a distraction. They think they're too good for this spot. They're going to be overlooking Colorado. And you now see the buffs, what, upwards to minus three and a half over by you guys at South Point. So, like you said, that late steam going to Colorado, uh, I took a little piece of them earlier, too. Uh, maybe not as much confidence in Colorado, though, that I did have in Montana State. But this Colorado team is very strong, 24th in adjusted offensive efficiency, top 40 defensively in that regard. Not only do I think if they could get past Boise State that, you know, uh, they're going to be a strong team in the next round, but I think they could outright win the next spot, too. So I think if Colorado rides some momentum from tonight, they could be a sneaky team to advance afterwards. I'll say this, just going through that late game. First game, nothing. I, I, I have nothing on the numbers too much. I don't want to take on the comeback on Grambling. I just don't think they're any good. Uh, and yeah. even though even though these 16 games, I mean, yesterday, I thought Wagner – Far and away the worst team in this tournament, and they come out and, and win, <laughs> even though they did their best to blow that game yesterday against Howard. Uh, this second game, I am not a fan of this Boise team. I don't think they're that good. Now, I don't love Colorado either. Colorado clearly is more talented. I actually think they have the better coach, which has my brain totally in, in, in a pretzel because it's like, oh, wait a second here. We're getting too aggressive. I might actually end up taking Boise if we see a four. Now, I don't know if we do, True. but if we see a four, I'm probably going to take it with the Broncos tonight. All right. 
Danny, before we get to you, your quartet of plays on Friday, since Friday seems the day that you, you love everything on the card here, but not so much for Thursday. <laughs> uh, I just want to gravitate real quickly to that, that Midwest pod, the four or five pod in the Midwest, which are the games late night in Salt Lake City, starting with Gonzaga and McNeese real quick here, where it's six and a half. This is a weaker Gonzaga team from what we're used to here. Uh, I, I'm just curious here, here with, with, with you on this. High-end major coach and Will Wade, who, of course, NCAA violations now with McNeese because of it. McNeese played uh, hit a, a, a non-con schedule that featured some very, some quality teams and a whole bunch of D2 teams and D3 teams on there. Steamroll through the Southland. Now to get Gonzaga. What type of shot do you give the Cowboys here in this one against the Bulldogs? I give them a real viable shot here. And I know you and I discussed this one. And I think you're on the same line of thinking as myself that the Bulldogs could have an early exit here. You have a tremendous offensive threat in Wells, who was a Southland Conference Player of the Year. And we know what he can bring to the table. He has had amazing performances earlier this year, a couple of games where he's dropped 30 plus. And I asked you this question. I mean, you know, you look at this for the average college basketball fan who's just getting integrated right now. And you go, all right, what's the difference between this Gonzaga team and teams of the past? They're not shooting as well from deep lately. They're not defending the ball very well from their opponent's shots beyond the perimeter. And McNeese, like I mentioned, not only do they have a prolific score, but the rest of the team can contribute as well. And what I like to scout out is how these teams are at the free throw line. And McNeese gets there pretty often and makes the most of those opportunities. So I would certainly gravitate toward taking the points with McNeese. I may throw a little bit on there. Didn't make it an official play, but I do have McNeese advancing in my bracket. And again, if I'm not mistaken, Jeff, uh, you have them going uh, a little bit further than I probably do and then most people do. Isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, you'll have to find <laughs> out well, how far I have McNeese going if you join the South Point Studios Tournament Challenge. Link is currently in the uh, link, link is currently in the description of this video if you're watching us in, on YouTube. There you go, Ryan McCormick. I got your mention on that uh, uh, for that as well. Uh, prize to be determined. Probably you get to uh, choose. Cho you know what? Can we make it that they get whoever wins get to choose Frank's outfit for a day, Ann? we we'll just do that. I think that's fair. Frank's not here. He can't defend himself right now. All right. Uh, the other one I want to ask you, and really more than anything, I, this pot is the most intriguing pot to me tomorrow because, again, I, I have McNeese winning outright against Gonzaga. No Kevin McCuller for Kansas this whole tournament. I was under the assumption when I was looking at Kansas stuff that he was going to play. He's not there. Dickinson is in after missing the Big 12 game tournament that one game it ended up being for the big 12 tournament i'm a little surprised this number didn't move more in all honesty after mcculler was ruled out for the tournament it was seven and a half at the open moved to eight now only has moved a point down after the mcculler news i'm a little surprised at that i don't know if i'm just talking like this because I wanted to get Kansas at like five and a half and then lay the points with Kansas. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, and now granted, this is the last game of the night tomorrow night. This is a 9.55 Eastern, 6.55 Pacific. There's only one game that's scheduled to start after this tomorrow night, and that's Drake and Washington State. Don't be surprised if this, if, uh, Danny, I, I see if I'm wrong here, but I expect this game to move. I expect Sanford to get bet, and I expect people to like this, this, this dog that's trendy. They be very careful, though. Even without McCuller, I still think Kansas is a good matchup for the Sanford team. I concur with you. Look, Sanford can score. They have a great effective field goal percentage number, top 10 in that regard. And they're a squad that can force some turnovers. Yes, McCuller's being out is monumental for this Jayhawks team. Nobody is denying that. But if we're narrowing it down to this individual game, it's still really hard to go against the Jayhawks. And I was talking about this a little earlier, Jeff, and we see this in betting all the time. And Again, maybe it's a little different when you look at it from the professional viewpoint versus collegiate. But more often than not, when we see big time players absent in a game, in a standalone game, and it's kind of leading up into it, the market will overreact. And you would think rightfully so, because X player is worth X amount of points. So that makes sense. 
But we see these teams rally around it, whether they play more inspired, more motivated because they want to win for their guy or they want to prove that they can win in spite of that top guy being out of the floor. And it allows other players the opportunity to shine. And not that these teams need any more motivation than already being in the tournament, but it's just one of those occurrences that happen frequently. A star player goes out, yet the team still finds a way to grind through and win. Now, it doesn't really persist past that first game, so that's why I don't feel too much conviction on the Kansas Jayhawks after round one, but I think they will handle Samford, and you're right, Jeff. If it does dip down like perhaps you're predicting that it will, then it does make Kansas an alluring bet, but we'll have to wait and see because I don't feel like lane seven, which is currently where it looks to be consensus-wise. Again, I don't like Kansas long-term in this tournament, more likely than not. With McCuller, different story. Now, I mean, they're probably maxing out by winning two games at most, unless if we get some Agreed. weird weirdness at the top of the bracket. But, hey, Purdue is uh, the one seed, Danny, so you, you never know. <laughs> Anything's uh, possible. Any, I, I, look, if Montana State goes and beats Purdue, I, I mean, what are we doing here for Purdue's program at this point? <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to – you actually wrote these up in the Sporting Tribune. Shout out uh, Arash Markazi, of course, out of L.A. Uh, a, a great website, Vegas – L.A., Hawaii as well. Let's go to Friday. Your neck of the woods, Northwestern, Florida Atlantic. Danny, you get the zoned in your area here with this one. Yeah, man, I wish I had access to bet in this game, but I'm still giving it out as a play for others that can wager on it. This might be my favorite play of the first round, fading the Northwestern Wildcats. Now, again, and I preface this when you and I talked earlier this week, we all know Northwestern fits the bill as being a team that can go far because they have one star player who can carry you that direction being Boo Booey. But if he's not hitting his shots from deep, if Northwestern can't get any other production outside of him, they're absolutely screwed. I mean, I think the number is like 90% of their scoring comes from their starting five, limited production off of their bench. So if the Owls can scheme well enough against Boo Booey and they're not really hitting threes that frequently, Northwestern does not have enough firepower to keep up with this Owls offense that is arguably better than what Northwestern presents. And FAU also has a really strong defense too. They can dominate the glass in this matchup. Northwestern missing a big body. And even if he plays, uh, what's his name? Nichols, right? If he's going to be in the game, it, it looks like it may be in spurts is what Collins, that coach said. So I like FAU, the market shifted toward their way. I laid, or rather I gave out, I guess you could say minus a buck 35 when uh, I saw that was the best price available on the money line. So I think the Owls take care of business against Northwestern. I'm I'm kind of uh, big in the anti-Big Ten conferences tournament, whereas I'm usually trying to find some reason to bet my conference, but in more games than uh, than a little bit less than that. Like, I just don't see them having a good tournament. Purdue still has a lot to prove. My alma mater, Nebraska, I don't want to touch with a 10-feet pole. I mean, look, they should win, but I've seen them do disgusting things before. And Northwestern is a team I absolutely want to fade, Jeff. So count me in with FAU. Let's uh, go to the Mountain West. 11 seeded New Mexico. Favorites mm -hmm. against Clemson and Danny, you and I talked about this a long way on your podcast. You and I are in agreement here on this one. Uh, the New Mexico, the rightful favorite is the 11 seed. Yeah, I mean, New Mexico, a lot better defensively, and they can also score at will on the offensive side of the ball. You look at this Clemson team, and they match up when you look at a lot of these Ken Palm rankings fairly well. And if you're kind of just viewing it from that broad landscape, you may go, okay, I, li I like Clemson here. But you look back at some of the games that they took part in during the regular season and just watching them with the eye test, just not a team that instills a lot of confidence in you. And I think New Mexico actually has a chance to win a couple games in this tournament. And it starts with overcoming Clemson. And I don't think the seeding does it justice here. So again, this was a spot that I laid the money line price minus a buck 25 with the Lobos. I think they're going to carry in a big wave of offense and be able to limit Clemson enough to where Clemson's just going to find themselves in a hole toward the end of the first half and unable to climb out of it in half number two because that Lobos defense is going to shut them down. So I'm team New Mexico all the way for this matchup. What's the peak for New Mexico in this tournament, Danny? Uh, let's see. I guess the peak would be sweet 16, right? Uh, you know, if you think they get out against Clemson and then Baylor beats Colgate, Baylor against New Mexico, because of how 
even keel i guess you could say on both offense and defense there's not too much volatility with new mexico talent wise sure there's a ceiling but we have seen crazier things happen in the tournament in in baylor again another team on paper that shows the capability of going deep but again i don't think that's the best matchup for the bears to go up against new mexico but yeah i think it would be sweet 16 and presumably you go up against arizona then assuming they can make it that way and then i think the wildcats would have the edge for sure if that were to be the showdown let's keep it on friday danny i it's amazing how all of your favorite plays ended up being on friday you get the you get to relax tomorrow I know, you right? get the chill <laughs> you, maybe some in-game bets tomorrow is going to be uh, pretty stress-free all things considered for you uh let's go late night these are the two last games of two of the <laughs> last games of the night on friday night and they're both 12 v fives the Dukes of James Madison take on yeah. the Wisconsin Badger Badgers of Madison, Wisconsin. Look at that symmetry right there. Five and a half on the Badgers <laughs> here. And, and this game is in Brooklyn. Winner will more likely than not play Duke in the round of 32. It's five and a half right now on Wisconsin, Danny. JMU is a great three-point shooting team. They're the second best team in the tournament defending the three ball. Ended the season 30 and 3. Conference championship. I understand the strength of schedule does not bode well for them in comparison to Wisconsin. And I get that Wisconsin's coming off a conference championship appearance. They fell short to the fighting Illini. And people are going to look at this game. They see the brand name of the Wisconsin Badgers and go, how are they only laying five in the hook against some school called James Madison? I'm all in on the Dukes here. I took five in the hook as an official play, sprinkling a little bit on that money line price because of what they can do from beyond the perimeter, because of how they can defend efficiently. Uh, their tempo, 71st, according to Ken Palm, Wisconsin in the 300. So if the Dukes are hitting their shots early, they're going to dictate the pace of this game. And despite having the veteran leadership that Wisconsin does, all, more often than not, especially away from Madison, they've struggled to keep up on the offensive end. That's another big red flag that I found with this Wisconsin team. They've had road losses to Michigan, to Rutgers, to Indiana. And you can make the argument that it's because the Big Ten beats up on each other. But, I mean, come on. When you're looking at which Big Ten teams to trust in the tournament, those are the games you want to reflect back on and go, yeah, they hung in there tough. And even though it was a close win, they still got the job done. Not the case for Wisconsin. So I'm all over JMU here. Took five in the hook. And like I said, even dabbled a little bit on the money line here. All right, your last one. And if you want uh, even more of a breakdown, the Sporting Tribune, where Danny has all of these written up in great detail as well, on top of what he's saying here on the show. Grand Canyon, St. Mary's. Danny, when I saw this matchup, I was not happy because I had it all lined <laughs> up as like Grand Canyon mm -hmm. is good, the perfect 12 seed. Give me the right five. And you and I are in agreement here. This is the wrong matchup at the wrong time for the Antelopes against a very efficient on offense Gale squad that on top of that is experienced and very well coached as always under Randy Bennett. Yeah, and Jeff, I mean, you know, going back really quick to that JMU-Wisconsin game, I think you and I may be in agreement with JMU, and that may be more of a public 12 seed bet. This definitely is going to be one with everybody on Grand Canyon. I mean, you heard Jay Billis talk about it, how he thinks Grand Canyon can make a deep run. And I understand why people would think that based on the electricity that this offense brings, the excitement, the capability of scoring at will. But when it's all said and done, this is like their come to Jesus moment against an actual team that can step up and lock you down. Top 20 in defense per Ken Palm is St. Mary's. You talk about experience. You talk about great coaching. And we know they're capable of scoring themselves. And they're a really good rebounding team, too. I think that's going to be a big discrepancy that we see between Grand Canyon and St. Mary's in this effort. So I actually believe we're getting a relatively cheap in line on the Gales here at minus five in the hook because of what this perception of Grand Canyon is and because we see all these plays that they make and that fast tempo and again, just scoring at will. But this is going to be the realization that, yeah, we're going up against a lot stiffer competition here. So I have a lot of trust in St. Mary's in this game, Jeff. And I actually think St. Mary's fits the bill as a team that can make a run. 
their ceiling's the final four in my mind. And I think at 14-1, to 1, which I wrote up about a little bit, uh, that may be worth a little bit of pizza money. St. Mary's defense can keep them in any game as long as they're hitting shots enough to stay within where their defense will keep them should come down to the wire in a lot of these matchups where they may be perceived as the underdog, which gives them a puncher's chance pretty much any game. All right, Danny, before we let you go, who's your final four? Who's cutting down the nets in Arizona when this is all said and done? All right, so as you know, like many other people, I've got, you know, a handful of brackets. I like to divvy it up a little bit. I'm not someone who stays with the same bracket every time. I want to have some variance. But I'll, I'll go with the first one that I made that I kind of hold to being my top one. And I've got UConn coming out. I've got Arizona coming out of the West. Uh, Midwest, I've got Creighton. Now, of course, that could be screwed early on if they fall short to Tennessee. I know you and I talked about that game a lot, uh, that potential meeting at least. But yeah, Creighton coming out of the Midwest and then Kentucky coming out of the South. Took a little piece of them earlier this year. I know Sam Paniotovich has been a big uh, advocate for this Kentucky team, said it on his show and just on Twitter all the time. And I was listening to him and been following that team since. And I have fallen in love with the offensive potential that this Kentucky team presents. So they're going to represent that side. And then I got UConn and Creighton. And I got Creighton taking over UConn. And a little bit has to do with strategy in the sense that you don't want to pick UConn because everybody's going to have them. I'm not saying it's the wrong pick. I'm just trying to differentiate myself from what the masses are going to do. And then you also have to realize that coming out of the region that UConn is, I mean, by the time they get to that point, if they get to that point, they're going to be so beat up. And it's just going to be such a more difficult path than some of these other potential contenders have that. I think they're going to fall short and replicating is hard enough as is. So that's another reason also why I think they may uh, fall short and be the runner up to this year's count, uh, tournament for March Madness. But yeah, the other brackets I'll say really quick, Tennessee, I put over Creighton. I definitely don't like Purdue coming out of that region. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the other variants. I might've had uh, St. Mary's and like I said, because of the futures representing in another one. And, uh, I know, like you said, the guys at South Point have a lot of weight being held on Auburn. Very curious to see if they do make a long run. That may be like a just completely for fun bracket that I make that I have Auburn in the championship. Because after hearing what you guys were saying over at the South Point looking deeper, yeah, this Tigers team definitely is fascinating. Danny Burke, everyone. Burke's Beat, the podcast, burksbeat.com. Now writing for the Sporting Tribune. Honestly, you were everywhere today. I mean, you were, you were all over the place today, DB. <laughs> and as always, Wednesdays with us here on Sports by the Buck. All right, Danny, pleasure as always, man. Thanks for hanging with us, and best of luck on everything uh, this week. Yes, you as well, Jeff. Looking forward to it, my man. Talk to you soon. All right, Danny Burke, everyone. All right, we'll take a quick break. We get back. Rob Mish joins us next here on Sports by the Buck. From the South Point studio, <laughs> the perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. See over under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yeah. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. Oreo. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at the clock. I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. Once you've satisfied your hunger, get ready for more of the hottest casino games in Vegas. Our 24-hour, 30-table, non-smoking poker room proudly hosts all the most popular poker games with a variety of betting limits. Visit the Poker Room for a schedule of daily tournaments. Whether you're going to hold them or fold them, the best place for poker is at South Point Casino. You'll notice that our craps tables are usually the loudest in the casino. If you've never played, join one of our free craps lessons to find out what makes this game so exciting. Check with the craps dealer for schedules and give it a roll. Bingo is also an exciting way to spend your time. We offer seven sessions of bingo every day. Bingo! And each session includes a cash ball jackpot, 12 bingo games, a progressive double action game, and a $10,000 bonus coverall. Electronic units are available. If you haven't played bingo with us, give it a try today. 
Guests can also get in on the action at our one-of-a-kind race and sports books. Two separate rooms designed to maximize your experience and comfort. Our sports book, with over 400 seats, puts you right in the middle of the action, 24 hours a day. Welcome back in. Sports by the Book is the show. South Point Studio, the site. Real quick here, just a quick update. Of course, first four action in Dayton, Ohio, about 10 minutes away from a battle of 16 seeds. Grambling, first ever NCAA tournament appearance for them. They are four and a half point underdogs at the moment. Has been for a few hours now against Montana State. Still steady there, 134 and a half. The total on that one, the winner of that, well, in the past, I'd say the winner of that has the, will get the right to get destroyed by the one seed, but uh, it is Purdue, who, of course, lost to a 16 play in a year ago in Fairleigh Dickinson. Uh, I think the circumstances may be a little bit different this go-around. Joining us in studio now, you find his work on Saturdays in the Chicago Sun-Times. You find his work in the Sporting News. He wrote a fabulous article on the process back there on Sunday, Chris Andrews, uh, Tony Sinisi, Vinny Malio, and of course our own Alex White. Superstar. Uh, superstar for sure. Uh, I know it as well, Rob. Yeah. Uh, and Rob Mish with us right now. It's a pleasure to have you in studio. Uh, uh, thanks for having me, man. Uh, I really appreciate uh, it. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's we're talking, talking during the, the short little break while you're getting in. It, this really is. Look, the Super Bowl may be the, the most fun betting event singular. This is the, yes, it is one singular event, but these first two days are as fun as it gets it's it's money drama carnival i couldn't believe how it is out there jeff i i, I mean this is a, this is the 16 seeds it's, forget it i i mean tomorrow again tomorrow we're on at 8 30 in the morning so i i was, I'm, I was about to say something i can't say on the air so i'm happy i, I stopped myself <laughs> there the lines the line is really nice right now yeah. out there it's going back close to the del mar deli forget forget a hello over there um the uh the line will go all the way back to those kiosks back there. That way, it'll come back all the way, like, snaking towards our studio right. tomorrow morning. And all I will say is, Mississippi State and Michigan State is the first game of the day. If you want to bet that game, do not get in line at 840, 845. Well, 840, you might have a shot. Do not get in line at 9. More likely than not, you're going to miss. I think so. Which just means you didn't want to bet the game just enough, uh, yeah. en enough there. Right? I think it's too bad that the show isn't being piped into the casino today because there's games going on, but there's a poor woman in the second row whose husband just came up to her before I came in here and said, I've seen Kansas play this year. They're really good. Circle them. No no idea about uh, uh, McCullers. McCullers. Yeah. You know, so actually, you know what, can, can we start there? Actually, sure. I brought it up with Danny uh, real quick, Rob, because uh, I'll ask Kaluch this as well when we have him in about 10 minutes. This game is fascinating in the way that I expected this number to move more when McCuller was ruled out, which tells me that the number was baked in that he may not play to begin with. But I'm a little surprised that the number was as high if it was potentially even sort of, hey, McCuller could be out here. Yeah, I have him more as a one-point value. I thought it was closer to two, two and a half even with McCuller, where it's like, all right, I thought this would maybe go to five and a half, right. five with him out. We're still seeing seven. You know, on, on that note, uh, I could give so many kudos to the everybody who was in the back room on oh, Sunday yeah, making yeah, these odds, yeah. and I just have to tip my cap to Chris Andrews because that was one of two games that he held off the board just to be safe, just to be certain. You, you and I know there's a lot of books who just slap those numbers up and let them move, but uh, I think him being cautious was was very prudent in this in this particular game. Yep, I 100% agree with that. And uh, look, we'll see. This is this is also the last game of the night tomorrow night. And you and I both know uh, people will, uh, it will be the, uh, the get right game for some or it will be the uh, get more money game. Uh, continuing a fun day for a lot of people. Uh, yep. I, I, I uh, will say, if this thing dips and it dips enough, I probably will lay it with Kansas, but not yet. Now we're, I'm, I've, not stay, I've stayed away from Kansas all year. They're one of uh, a top. They're definitely one of the top six teams that I have left out of all of my yeah, futures yeah. actions, yep. just because you have to. I, no I, as, I, as I told you last year, I went into the tournament in a, in a far different way a year ago. It worked out great for me. Actually, I went into the season buying uh, Final Four tickets, futures tickets, laying off on my day-to-day -day mm -hmm. action because I'm so busy with, with other stuff I'm doing. So I figured I'm going to try something new and, and hopefully save some money and, and have a thicker wallet. 
and last year could not have worked out any better. And I don't mean to trumpet trumpet my horn. I just am curious if I can come close to duplicating it this year. So uh, Kansas is one of those six that I just I tossed out, never thought of, because I, as I've told you, I'm Big East heavy, well, heavy, hard. heavy, heavy. It's hard to get. The, the final four all bet on at once. You managed to do that last year, which is which is pretty. I good. did of, of twenty three tickets, um, and and the most the best one was getting Florida, Florida Atlantic, Atlantic a year oh, ago, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. and that was in December. Yeah. And uh, every week I I track the top ten offenses, top ten, Defense. top ten percent mm-hmm. offenses, top ten percent defenses. Mm-hmm. I, I put those. That's usually about a dozen every Sunday. Then I look at ATS, and if any of those teams are in the top. 10 10 percent in ATS then I underline that team and Florida Atlantic just the alarms went off last December that's when I got them at 60 to 1 other people got them at 101 200 to 1 300 to 1 so I was a little late to that party but I'll tell you what that ticket alone paid for all of my expenses I had San Diego State in the final four 18 to 1 I had Miami in the final four UConn final four and then two tickets on UConn to win it all so all of that was gravy, and it's it's my bankroll going forward. So I, I just want to get to just, again, you've been around it. <clears throat> you've been here for, for 22 a, years. For, for a long while now. Yeah, I've been running for 37 years. So just looking at, at I mean, like we said, this weekend uh, is unlike anything else on the sports calendar. Yeah, I, I did and, it. And for people that may be coming to town here for the first time, a lot of people are making the, their inaugural trip for yeah. a tournament to Vegas this yeah. year. What advice would you give them being out here tournament week, year after year? What advice would you give someone who's a newbie? Boy, if you're a greenhorn, just you just got to take it in and relax and breathe. Remember to breathe. And number two, remember agua. Remember water. Water is priceless. You need your water. Um there we go. And and just don't get carried away with too much either. Stay in your shoes and uh, just try to do smart stuff where where if you feel yourself getting kind of edgy and you like this game and you want to go oh, X on it, just go half X and, and just relax and, and have as much fun as you can. The biggest thing I'll say real quick also, pace yourself. Yes. <laughs> that goes with, with breathing, with, with, with water. Yeah, just pace yourself. Yeah. I, that's what I, I said it last week as well. Just yeah. Just like, these days are long yes. when it's all said and done. If yes. you're going wire to wire, it's a, it's a 13-hour day more times than not. Yeah. Sometimes even pushing 14 if the games start late. And it's artful to watch the veterans do it. Oh, yeah, look, you just you got you to gotta pace yourself. Yeah. I, 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 actually, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> you know, honestly, <laughs> it, is a, it is a work of art. I have one person in mind completely. I'll tell you off the air yeah. who, who it is. But uh, uh, I have one person straight in my mind here on that. All right. Uh, Rob, uh, we'll get two more questions, and yeah. we'll get you out of here before uh, Kaluch uh, sure. joins us here. Uh, just, just look. Uh, that wasn't loud enough. <laughs> um, just looking at basically uh, these top seeds. What the number one, the number one seeds here. We we've talked about it all year. UConn is it, they're juggernaut. They're better than they were a year ago, which is amazing because they won a title. Here's the thing with UConn, and I don't don't mean to interrupt you, but uh, I I don't go off seeds or anything. I'm just just on matchups and intricacies with the numbers and teams and all that, so I don't ever pay attention to seeds. But this damn UConn team is, is, like you said, it's it's a juggernaut. Last year, it became the fifth team in the previous 10 tournaments to go 6-0 in the tournament mm-hmm. against the spread. Yep. Uh, in 16, Villanova crushed the spread by 16.3 points a game. Last year, UConn did it at 14.8 points a game. That's Ooh. that's just a disregard for your opponent and Hurley going out and almost telling them, listen, here's the spread and we're going to Put them on them. Put it on them, So one of the best things I could maybe recommend that uh, I'm going to do this year is, and even if it's only 22 bucks, Game one with UConn. I'm putting 22 on UConn on the spread, and that's going to be its own little separate investment. And as they win and hopefully cover, I'm run rolling it, it, it over. Up. And if they if they match what they did last year, that right there is a free thousand dollars. It'll be a heck of a run if they do it again. And uh, of course, that uh, you said to the the first you uh, the first Villanova team to do that. 2016. 2016. Yeah, 2018. I don't think covered against uh, Texas Tech. I think was the game they didn't cover in that run of memory. Sure serves me correctly, but Villanova did win all those games 
boy. Probably double. I don't know. That 2018 Villanova team was so good. It was. That was the closest was. one to this UConn team, in all honesty. Well, in this in this UConn team, I just uh, I have a I have I pity San Diego State and I pity yeah. Illinois and I pity other teams that wound up in the East because that's just going to be an immovable force. I, I will say the one the one thing with that region and Vinny uh, Vinny has been uh, give Vinny credit. He's been higher on Auburn than basically anyone. Mm. Period. The whole year. Mm. They win the SEC tournament. Your reward is you're the four with UConn. And honestly, if I'm UConn, that's like, wait a second, that's one of maybe like three teams in the country that actually has the bodies and athletes in order to play with us. I, that's the only matchup in this tournament that's, it, that scares me a little bit mm. before we make it to Arizona. For well, see, I'm also um, upset that Iowa State is in there because I think I oh, think I think, a, I think that's a, a UConn matches up great with I, Iowa State. Well, and I understand they've got some <laughs> some offensive issues, but well, how they just took apart Houston was unbelievable. And you know, oh, as yeah. soon as I leave here, I'm going to find Vinny and make him a bet. U, UAB. And uh, or Auburn and Connecticut. I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna go make that bet. Oh, he's back there. You can go. Yeah, you can go, I don't uh, trust Pearl. Yeah. Oh, the, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't. I just Omaha. I just don't trust him. And in the and in past years, that's helped me. Okay. As you as you can see, yeah. Uh, I well before we let you go, then just since UConn's a juggernaut here, and, and based off of what you're saying, that's the overall pick when it's all said and done. Who is the one? Th- what What is the one team that could be that could dethrone? That's what is one team that you're looking at potentially other than UConn. I think on a given day, the Cyclones. It is Iowa State. I think so. It is and Iowa I, State. I think okay. so. I was. It was fun talking to Alexandra after Sunday when they made the the numbers, and uh, she agreed with me. She got them at fifty to one. Yeah, she has a great number. I on scrambled them. last week and got twenty five to one. Yeah. I'm happy with it, and so uh, I just think on a given day that 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 could be it. Rob Mish. Of course, you find him in the Sporting News. You find him in the Chicago Sun-Times on Saturday. Also, again, if you haven't checked it out, uh, go check out the article he wrote on the process of getting the numbers up first, forget just in, the, in Nevada, first in the country, up here at the South Point. Fantastic Company. job. Unbelievable job. On the tweets as well, Rob Mish. That's M-I-E-C-H to spell Rob's last name. Rob, pleasure as always. Thanks Thank for you, hanging sir. with us today. When we get back, Dwayne Colucci from up north. There it is much better. And the Kaluch joins us next here on Sports by the Bug. South Point offers all the types of entertainment you'd expect at a first class Las Vegas resort. Did you know our 400 seat showroom is one of Las Vegas's top destinations for live entertainment? Enjoy live performances by classic Vegas entertainers, bands, and today's hottest comedians, plus a rock and dance floor. You can also enjoy live entertainment at the Grandview Lounge, where you'll feel all the vibes of old Las Vegas. Enjoy the music, and if you love to laugh, don't miss The Dirty at 1230, our very own free comedy show, every Friday night at 1230 a.m. in the Grandview Lounge. The Dirty is 100% free, so arrive early. Go to southpointcasino.com or call the box office at 77136 for today's performances at the showroom and the Grandview Lounge. When you're ready for your favorite cocktail, stop in and unwind at one of our seven specialty lounges. There's a bar around every corner, because you're in Vegas, baby. South Point Casino has plenty of attractions for the whole family. Catch a movie. Our 16-screen movie theater includes two XD extreme screens for the ultimate in viewing, sound, and luxury. After the show, treat the family to a variety of treats at our old-fashioned ice cream parlor, Kate's Corner. We scoop up a variety of creamy concoctions, including smoothies, hand-dipped cones, milkshakes, malts, sodas, and sundaes. At Kate's, there's something for everyone. And if you've still got time to spare, our bowling center might be right up your alley. Voted Best of Las Vegas, it's a great place for friends and family fun. 64 lanes, a pro shop, snack bar, and arcade. And while the kids are bowling, you can play slots and sip on a drink in the Alley Cat Lounge while overlooking the lanes. For our more serious and professional bowlers, the South Point is also home to a separate tournament bowling plaza. Welcome back. Sports by the Book, South Point Studio. About 16 minutes to go today. And we'll be uh, having 16 fun minutes with our guy, Dwayne Colucci. Of course, you see him up at the Rampart Race and Sportsbook Director up there. Uh, 
Dwayne, it's the first time you've been on this show. You've been on with Frank a lot. It's it's so good to see you, man. It's it's always a pleasure. Yeah, definitely, Jeff. Uh, you've been a stranger up at the Rampart, but I know you're doing such great work here at the South Point and definitely appreciate it. You know, I, I understand why Chris and Vinny suck you right up and definitely <laughs> are giving you those comps to stay away from me. <laughs> well, Dwayne, I'm probably going to have to visit you this weekend. I will, I will throw that out there. But, of course, uh, all the offerings that are here at the South Point are available at Dwayne's property up there, Rampart. Uh, one of the best properties there is here in the city of Las Vegas altogether. Dwayne, uh, Danny Burke and I were having a debate about this earlier. The Friday jackpot card, okay? Uh, right. And, of course, you're doing this on Thursday as well. $5. You pick all the games. Pick them. Just pick the winners. You can uh, have a chance to win $10,000 on Thursday and then all 16 games on Friday. Dwayne, Danny was saying this is Salmon. I, I guess it's orange. I don't know what color this is, but Dwayne, this is always one of <laughs> always one of the best promotions. You guys do this during football season, uh, the week one of the NFL, college bowl season, and of course now the Thursday and Friday of the NCAA tournament. Always one of the best promotions of the year. Yeah, definitely. And ten thousand dollars, Jeff. Ten thousand dollars for nothing. We put that up at the Rampart in the South Point, and just five dollars, uh, not against the spread. And like we said, orange, salmon, whatever you want to call it, then pink <laughs> on Friday. So we definitely have it going on. And Chris does a great job. We try to promote this. We have the same exact betting menu that the South Point has at the Rampart. And it's definitely a great affiliation. Just, you know, myself, Chris, Vinny, we don't so it's just, uh, you know, it's tremendous to promote this and to give the public something for free. And at the Rampart, too, Jeff, every time I seed beats a lower seed, I'm giving out $100 in free slot play and merchandise. Uh, all you have to do is bet $20 at the Rampart on the tournament, and I give you a drawing ticket. So it's it's tremendous. And the, the jackpot promotion, the jackpot card promotion is tremendous, like you said, whether it's the bowl game season, whether it's the first two days of the NCAA tournament. This is something that we give to the public of Las Vegas that nobody else does, and it's just a, a tremendous promotion. And we're going to definitely book more than 10000 We have the cards at the Rampart. In all the racks, I'm sure Chris has them all over the South Point. You know, it's definitely a great promotion. Dwayne, just getting to the bracket as a whole, just, just your thoughts here. Look, you and I are Big East guys through and through. It's great to see UConn, the number one overall seed. Uh, it's great to see uh, Marquette, number two, Creighton, number three. Very strange to see St. John's at Seton Hall out of this thing. But regardless, I, UConn sitting there as a behemoth, the betting favorite, to win a national championship, Dwayne. Just your thoughts on the Huskies and really that whole East region there. Yeah, definitely. You know, Newton is a, a tremendous athlete, and this team is just battle-tested. They are so well-versed. They they dominated last year. They dominated Big East tournament play. You know, Marquette was kind of a challenge for the first half, but they didn't do anything. And I have to say, you you touched upon it, Jeff. How did they not get St. John's in there? Ken Palm mm -hmm. of like 25, and Seton Hall beat UConn. So, I don't understand how the Big East only has a few teams in there, and Definitely their marquee teams, even Creighton. You know, Creighton is definitely a home team that wins and dominates at home, but they could definitely do damage in this tournament. You know, Shaka Smart is a, a tremendous coach, and UConn is the number one overall seed and definitely the best team in the tournament, probably better than last year. So it's going to take a lot of beating. You look at this, you know, you look at Stetson, then you in the second round, they're going to dominate. And I'll tell you the truth, there's not much of a test unless Auburn gets there. And that, that, that's not a shoe in So definitely, Jeff, I think the Big East has been tremendously, uh, you know, valued here, but not overvalued because there were some teams that should have got in. And this is a tremendous bracket, but UConn is definitely the top team in the nation. And they're going to win this tournament, I feel, once again, unless there's, you know, an injury or something bad happens because they are just so well coached and so well played and they're better than last year. Yeah, I, I, it is amazing to say they are better than they were a year ago, but they are. There's not up for debate. They are definitely better than they were a year ago. Uh, taking it down to the West region here, Dwayne, North Carolina, of course, the one seed, but Arizona, the betting favorite. 
to come out of it. New Mexico, a uh, a cheeky uh, pick to uh, make a run as an 11 seed. Baylor's there as well. St. Mary's and Alabama rounding out four and the five here. Dwayne, uh, a- again, some people will come up to you probably be like, wait a second, why is the two seed Arizona the favorite in in the in the region? It's just because Arizona's hot power rated higher than North Carolina, and uh, quite frankly. I think Arizona's got an easier round of 32 game potentially than North Carolina does with the winner of Michigan State and Mississippi State looming for the heels. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you look at Arizona, they've been so dominating in the Pac-12, but they lost to Washington State twice. And now mm-hmm. I'm looking at the uh, the action at the Rampart and South Point, and Drake is actually one and a half now against Washington yep. State. So you go figure it out, Jeff. I mean, Washington State, I thought, was definitely battle-tested and played well in the Pac-12 and could possibly beat Arizona. And now, like you said, you're looking at the structure of this uh, bracket, and North Carolina is better up to 25 against Wagner from the 24 opener. So definitely they're going to have a nice route. Tennessee, though, is definitely difficult to stop. I mean, you're looking at this. We're taking tremendous action on the Volunteers. 19 opener, now 21 and a half at the Rampart and South Point. So tremendous action on these games. I think Kentucky definitely has an offensive, uh, you know, overflow. They have to play a little defense, Jeff, but they're definitely capable of outscoring any team in the country. They one of the best teams in the SEC, and I definitely think they could win and continue on. And like I said, Creighton, people are betting against them now. 14 open at the Rampart and South Point, down to 12 and a half, but Creighton's going to win that first round. So this is definitely a difficult tournament. Like we said, there were a lot of teams that should have been in that were not. They've been, uh, you know, uh, you look at the voting and whatever you want to call it, it's been under suspect. And definitely, I think this is a great tournament for upsets because of the fact that teams are undervalued. A team like Dayton even is, uh, you know, I can't believe that that Nevada is definitely a higher seed than them. They're going to beat them too. So, uh, you know, I have a lot of opinions here, Jeff, but definitely I think, This is a great tournament. We're looking for great handle at the Rampart and South Point, and there's chances for upsets all over the place. Well, and also, Dwayne, you just mentioned it here, and and Chris has brought it up. The handle last week for conference tournaments was through the roof here at the South Point, which I would imagine was the same up up at your property as well. And uh, these days, these Thursday and Friday are like nothing else in this city from a bet, from a sports betting perspective. Yes, the Super Bowl is crazy. Yes, it is the NFL championship game championship game when it's all said and done. But there's just something about going from nine fifteen in the morning to ten fifteen at night with thirteen straight hours of basketball and bets and and whatever whatever else, whatever beverage you may be cons- consuming through those 13 hours but these days are there's nothing like these days Dwayne it really isn't Tremendous, and it's been for years, Jeff. Yeah. You've hit the nail on the head. We love it here at the Rampart in South Point, and it's just a great feeling. This is a tremendous handle time of the year for us. The tournament brings out so many people from different ends of the country. I have so many people staying at the JW Marriott Rampart coming out to see me for these four opening days that are just tremendous. So many games, so much competition, and it's better than anything. You know, uh, next to the Super Bowl, I will say the Super Bowl is always king, whether Mm -hmm. it's in Vegas or not, but the NCAA tournament is second to none, and it definitely ranks up there. We are expecting tremendous handle. That's why we have the jackpot cards, parlay cards, everything going on, promotions, drink specials at the Rampart. Like I said, we have the bad beat, $100 free slot play. Everything is falling into line, and the competition is what everybody anticipates, and everybody has an opinion. That's what's great, Jeff. You know, uh, wherever you graduated, maybe you're betting on that team. You bet to win the region. You bet to win the overall tournament. You bet money line. And there's always a Cinderella team. So we just love it out here as bookmakers in Las Vegas. I'm proud to be a part of it. We love it. We promote it. And definitely looking forward to it. And definitely as we go on into further rounds. And then, you know, Jeff, you know what I feel. Kentucky Derby is right around the oh, corner, yeah. too, uh, first Saturday in May. So it's great out here in Las Las Vegas, love it. Well, I mean, again, you get the Derby that first week of May. Uh, baseball already started. Uh, yes, Dodgers beat the Padres last night in Seoul. Well, the last night, this morning, <laughs> here, here in the States. Uh, they beat uh, they beat them 5-2. to two. Uh, 
Dodgers and under getting home yesterday. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we it's total, it, 104 and a half now on the win total, Jeff. You know, they won that game. So we got up. <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest with you, Dwayne. I am. I, 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 I don't bet a lot of baseball win totals. I was very close to betting the Dodger win total over, even at that astronomically right. high number, just because of the amount of talent they had. Yeah, I, again, I didn't watch the game last night. I was asleep like any normal human being would be more at, at five in the morning. Uh, but yeah. I, I mean, look, I mean, I, I, a late cup, one error leads to a, the deluge for the Dodgers last night, and that's kind of what it's going to be all year for them. Which actually. Uh, Dwayne, I would imagine since opening day is next Thursday, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of public tickets that involve the L.A. Dodgers, the New York Yankees, and whoever the one seeds are that are playing on Thursday next week, which I believe <laughs> are you would be UConn and North Carolina next Thursday night. Yeah, definitely. You know, you're going to have money line parlays and <laughs> baseball starts up. And we get, get, I'll be honest with you, and Chris will tell you, Jeff, the last couple of years have been tough on bookmakers. Uh, the baseball has been incredibly successful for the patron and the, uh, you know, casual better or the sharp better. Baseball is very tough, our toughest time of the season as bookmakers to make money. So you're definitely going to have so many different parlays, money line parlays with the Dodgers that are a phenomenally talented team. Like you said, you know, Altani, uh, all down the line, Freeman. It's incredible how much money they spent. And definitely the Astros are good. They're right there. The Yankees, you're going to have so many different money line parlays on teams like UConn, North Carolina, as we move forward in the tournament, like you said, and definitely, uh, uh, you know, even the hockey now, the Vegas Golden Knights, I was I was at the game last night and they didn't play all that well. So you're going to have a lot of people that are betting on Colorado and Vancouver or, who are playing very well. And you're going to have money line parlays on these teams. The Rangers are probably the front runner to win the Stanley Cup. So you have so many different aspects. NBA, people are going to be money line parlaying. The Lakers, Celtics are playing phenomenal. Denver is picking it up. So it's a great time of the year. You have all this sports going on and baseball now gets into the mix. But like I said, it's definitely the toughest time of the year, Jeff, for a bookmaker to make money when baseball is, uh, you know, singular by itself, especially with the Dodgers and some of these teams that are definitely going to run the table, in my opinion. Atlanta is at the top of their game. And, you know, you might have some teams that are, are up and coming, but uh, Dodgers, 103 and a half, like you said, Jeff, and you're tempted to bet over. So <laughs> what a talented team. <laughs> yeah, look, I haven't. I the whole the baseball brain will really start coming after this week. I uh, can take a little, take a day or two. We'll really look at it. But uh, oh, man, Atlanta, the Dodgers, clearly the two best teams. Well, the best team is not one. Uh, well, you could argue the Astros were the best team uh, two years ago, but the Rangers were not the best team in baseball, even though they won the World Series. Uh, a year ago. He's Dwayne Colucci. You can find him up at the Rampart Race and Sportsbook Director up there. Of course, all the lines that are available here at the South Point available up at the Rampart. So that even means you can bet on which South Point studio hosts has the NCAA tournament winner in the pool. Dwayne, I'm the long shot. I'm the long shot. I picked a horrible team. I have Kentucky and nothing. 22 to 1. <laughs> 22 to 1 on my team. Frank, Frank's the favorite. Look at Frank. Look at look at this, Dwayne. We 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 did such a ridiculous job drafting that Frank Nicotero is the favorite. What is wrong with us? How is that possible? <laughs> Who did he pick? Pittsburgh. They're not even. No, no, well, he did get to, he did get Duquesne, which is the Pittsburgh team in this field. But he has UConn, Tennessee, and Iowa State. That's pretty top wow. heavy. So he did great in that. He's the best. I, I, I'll be honest with you. You know, this guy is unbelievable. He's just picking him, uh, you know, from the sky. And he got the Pittsburgh team, like you said. I didn't even realize that. Duquesne, Pittsburgh ain't even in the tournament. So I figured him and Chris had that. And, you know, definitely, you know, I had St. John's, so they're not in. Right. They turned it down. 25 Kempom and not in. Do you believe that, Jeff? I can't believe that. I, look, if... Hall beat UConn. Wow. After after watching Virginia last night, I know for a fact that Indiana State, St. John's, Seton Hall, Pittsburgh, Oklahoma, the five teams who I think had the five biggest gripes of being left out, all of them would have done better than Virginia last night. And that, I mean, in all honesty, what do we have in the studio? We have Drew Doug and Jerry, myself, we'll include you, Dwayne. The five of us might have done as well as Virginia did last night against Colorado State. Might have. 
I'll be honest, Jack. Uh, I'll give you now a prop, a New York Bookie Dwayne prop. Please. The next time Virginia scores over 75 points in college basketball, I will comp anybody who comes to the Rampart at the Hawthorne Grill. So oh. it's like, whoa. <laughs> anytime. Now, in the next five, ten years, as long as I'm there, which I, I hope to be there, but uh, I'll be honest with you. I can't believe Virginia was even in there, and they never score. It's, it's incredible. It's so bad. It's but I will tell you, if you actually were giving away that comp, that's a heck of a comp, the Hawthorne Grill, the amazing restaurant up, up in your property on the JW Definitely. Marriott <laughs> side. <laughs> Dwayne, pleasure as always, man. Thanks for hanging with us today. Uh, thanks, Jeff. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Dwayne Colucci, everyone. What a fun show. Danny Burke, Dwayne Colucci, Rob Mish, all on the show today. Uh, before we go, a few things. Tomorrow, Alex White and I, 8.30 in the morning to 9.30, previewing the games for Thursday. We'll do it again on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this week. And also, too, I have to do it. It's I, I'm contractually obligated to do this. The best party in Las Vegas for the NCAA tournament, or actually I should say the best party for the Mayhem of March, I should say, uh, in Las Vegas, is here at the South Point. The Mayhem upstairs. A big uh, the, the, the setup is amazing. The most massive madness party in Vegas. 250 seats. 2,000, 250 tables for 2,000 seats. Free parking. Free entry. All of the betting kiosks and windows. 16 places to bet. Food and drink specials tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. Doors open, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, get there by 7.30 if you want to make sure you have your spot reserved where you want it to be in that room. The best party in Las Vegas for the big show. We're all dancing upstairs for the tournament. All right, that's all the time we have. Uh, and since... Uh, we're technically going till the tournament starts tomorrow. Should I reveal who my national champion is right now? I think I should. Uh, I have a repeat. I have the UConn Huskies winning it all. I know chalk isn't fun. I have an all Big East final, though. I have UConn over Creighton. Uh, I have North Carolina as one semifinalist, and Kentucky is the other one. So UConn over UNC, Creighton over Kentucky. We get UConn over Creighton in the final. Uh, I'll make Alex reveal hers on at the top of the show tomorrow to uh, make sure everyone gets that before your brackets lock up at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific tomorrow morning. We'll see you again tomorrow, 8.30 in the morning for Sports by the Book, South Point Studio.